Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested here, and today I'm going to be doing another figure review as well as a fun diorama build for my photography hobby. Uh, today we're taking a look at the Hot Toys one quarter scale uh, Spider Man, of course, from the movie Spider Man Homecoming. This just came out, this figure that is, been long anticipated ever since I saw it at the Sideshow booth at Comic Con a couple years ago, and Sideshow sent me this one to take a look at. So in the world of kind of hot toys and sideshow uh, poseable figures, sixth scale is the most common. So that's about one foot tall. And when you look at a sixth scale figure, so for example, I bought this one recently. This one is Spider-Man from Far From Home, the upgraded suit. Uh, there's a lot of detail you can pack into this uh, from head sculpt to the costuming to the articulated uh, body on the inside. And one of the things I always look for is like, what is the, the shelf presence of a figure? Like when I pose it, when I have it with its accessories or a diorama base, like what's the thing that's gonna make me you know, that's gonna catch my eye when I walk by it or when someone else walks into the room when I have it on a shelf or on a desk or in my living room. And with a quarter scale figure, I have a couple of those as well. I have an Iron Man, a Darth Vader. This size just really is so eye-catching, not just for the sheer size of it because this is about you know 16 inches tall or so, but because at this size, the costuming, the details uh, scale up. And when you look at a character like Spider-Man, you know, obviously very different from an Iron Man or Darth Vader. Iron Man, you have you know, the, the paint finish on the armor pieces to make it look like it's that shiny metal. That's the thing that's gonna get it eye-catching. Or for Vader, you have a lot of uh, that drapery on the kind of the, the, the faux leather costume and the cape. Uh, but for Spider-Man, it's a skin-tight bodysuit. And for the movies and the most recent movies, the costume that you saw on film with CG, uh, the the artist though had to kind of emulate real materials and the the creators here at hot toys had taken the look of that materials and found the right fabrics and sewn this so that it reads exactly how i imagine the character would look like in the real world. And that's a combination of a more kind of elastic blue part on the suit here, as well as a really nicely textured red part. It's not just the color differences between the blue and the red, but the red has almost a, a relief to it. It's, it's a little bit bumpy. Uh, and with the screen printing of the iconic Spider-Man pattern, um, you have also you know the raised spider on the front and also the um, the raised outline, the black trim that was a hallmark of this particular design. And so just the different materials, the different finishes of the blue, the red, and the black here, when light hits it, and when you get up close to it, it looks, it looks more than just a traditional toy. It looks like a boutique costume that's been sewn and put on a, a posable figure. And the figure underneath here, it's highly articulated. And one of the things, because it's Spider-Man, they really want you know collectors to pose the character. You can hear that the joints are all ratcheted, so they hold in place. And the ratcheting allows for really precise placement of you know where you have the arms and the elbows, even the head, and you, know, you have things like the ab crunch here, enough of a torso twist, uh, but really importantly, it's gonna be on the legs and the, the ankles. I feel like for a Spider-Man character, in my experience posing Spider-Man, it's all about how much you can bend that knee for a wall crawling look, or, and how stable the character is when you have it bent, you know, when you have the ankle and the toe hinge here bent. So it can be, you know, a wider pose or a climbing pose or an action pose. And uh, the ratcheting here totally works really well. I've been able to kind of fine tune the, the placement of how I have this character posed. And there is a wide range of swappable accessories. So of course you can swap out the hands from the fist to a web slinging, a twipping pose. Uh, there is also, uh, as with the other sixth scale Spider-Man figures, uh, you have a little bit of webs 
that are sculpted. So they plug in to the web shooters. You can have him swinging. Uh, I actually like the, my Spider-Man not necessarily using the webs. I kind of like him more in a, a bracing pose and ready to leap into action. Uh, you can also swap out the head here, and this one comes with a really amazing likeness of Tom Holland. The paint application on a quarter scale figure never ceases to amaze me. I've always been impressed. For example, I have a one six scale Tom Holland sculpt on this Spider-Man figure. This one is actually taken from the upgraded suit. I put him on the stealth suit and it really, like, I look at the six scale one, I'm very familiar with it. I think it's a wonderful likeness, one of the best Tom Hollands out there. The painting from the, the shine on the eyes, eyebrows, they do a really great job of adding some dimension to the sculpted hair as well. And on the quarter scale, it just, blows the six scale away. They're not exactly the same sculpt and uh, Hot Toys is known for having their original sculpts be uh, you know, hand sculpted um, and prototype as opposed to a, a pure digital sculpt. Uh, and you know, there's differences not only in the way the hair drapes but just the, the expression. And I think the likeness here of Tom Holland is exceptional and the paint application is second to none. You know, one thing that surprised me is looking at the head sculpt though, compared to the mask sculpt is the head, the unmasked sculpt is definitely bigger. Um, and maybe it feels to me maybe like one or 2% too big. Uh, and so I actually I'm kind of debating which which sculpt I like, pref I prefer more. Uh, with the mask Spider-Man, you can swap out the lenses um, and that's really easy. You can pop these off. These are magnetically attached, so very easily pop off and they come with the wide eye, the, the squinting eye, as well as the, the kill mode, the red eye version. And you can mix and match. So you can have him be very, you know, quizzical look or an intense look. Uh, really adds to the personality of, of Spider-Man. Uh, one of the things that really love pointing out is just how they decide to sew the mask on. because. Um, it's real fabric, right? It's real cut and sew. And choosing where the seams are is a thing you always want to take a look out for in, in the body costume as well as specifically something like this masked helmet. And if you look at the front, there's no seam down the center here, which I think is a really impressive way that um, they've implemented this design. There is a seam that goes around the back half of it. And then there's some that blend in to the screen printing along the eyes of the side, but unless you're really looking for it, you're looking at this straight on or even from the side, it looks like, it almost looks seamless. It's just really, really impressive. Uh, among the other accessories, there's a wide range of them. Not only do you have Tom Holland head, you also have the unmasked uh, Spider-Man, uh, just the, the, the mask here, uh, which you can hold in his hand. You can actually cannot fit this on top of the head sculpt. Believe me, I've tried and that's not a good idea. Uh, and there's some other fun things like you have his spider drone, uh, you have the holographic map uses to track the vulture. Um, and my favorite accessory is actually this backpack uh, and also a cell phone that he uses. The backpack is really fun because, you know, Spider-Man putting the backpack on with the Tom Holland head sculpt really, tells the story of this is just that kid goes to the high school and has to be Spider-Man in the middle of the day. And from an aesthetic perspective, the backpack straps that go over his shoulders, which are pretty prominent traps right here, uh, almost evoke the, the bandolier that Captain America wears. And I, I think it adds a nice breaking up of uh, the, the suit design uh, to have again, yet another piece of fabric um, to add to the, the form and the silhouette of, of Spider-Man. Man. This figure does come with a display base and uh, there are two versions of it. I have the standard version. There's also a deluxe version. I think this is okay. It's serviceable. Um, it tells the kind of the end of the film with the vulture helmet and all these kind of parts of the, the vulture wings um, in this, um, this kind of uh, collision scene. And, uh, but you know, the, the small piece of wing here, other than that and the helmet, it kind of looks a little bit generic to me. Uh, the deluxe version has a full size wing, which has a lot of shelf presence. But really the important thing here is that it's a place to mount 
the dynamic stand here so I can pose Spider-Man in uh, not just standing on the ground, but kind of in flight, uh, or again, a more active uh, dynamic pose. Uh, there are lights built into here, and uh, I do like the green lights that come out of the Vulture's helmet, but it's one of those things that I, I take a look at this and I'm not sure I wanna display uh, this Spider-Man with this basic stand. And so uh, after posing with this for you know a couple days, one of the things I wanted to do was make my own diorama for this. And so that's exactly what I did. And one of my favorite kind of um, pieces of artwork, promotional artwork that the studio put out with the release of the film was uh, an image of Spider-Man grabbing this kind of iconic, you know, highway sign, this green sign um, with New York in the background. And uh, it says like Bronx and Queens, and it really uh, shows the scale of Spider-Man and also, you know, that kind of agility that he has and I look at that and I thought that green works really well in contrast to the red and blue of this figure so I wanted to recreate that and so after a weekend of fabrication that is exactly what I have done I have made this highway sign as my own custom diorama piece for this Spider-Man figure. And to make this, uh, it was actually a really fun exercise in a new type of material. This is made out of acrylic and I've been familiar with cutting plywood, cutting cast acrylic, but this is actually two color extruded acrylic sold by uh, Invencibles. I'll include a link in the description below if you have like a Glowforge laser cutter. So this is the material and this is a, like an apple green color I'd want to find a different green, see which one best matched. Um, and you see it has this color on the front, but behind it, it's actually white. It's actually two-tone. The green is only on a thin layer at the top. And this acrylic is made for milling, it's made for laser cutting, and the idea is if you use it in like a CNC mill, you can kind of etch out um, the color on the top part and reveal the white underneath. And that also works with the laser cutter if you uh, kind of tune your settings. Now, uh, extruded acrylic is different from cast acrylic. It's not as brittle, it works under a milling machine, uh, but it's also uh, a little more temperamental for a laser cutter. Um, you have to really be careful with your etch and cut settings because um, it does melt really easily and you could get really like curled edges. And so I did a, a bunch of fine tuning and whipped up Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I've actually found a reference photo of the exact sign, I think, that the uh, the movie poster was based on, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway with Bronx Queen exit, uh, and found the, the right elements uh, to scale this up, and so I've then laser cut this uh, and etched out all the white parts here. The white parts here aren't paint masking. It's not like it's spray painted. It actually is the etched underneath the acrylic uh, and then did some inlay with the red and the blue parts as well. And uh, really, really happy with how this came out. Not only because it's a nice matte finish on here, so it's not like your standard high gloss uh, cast acrylic, uh, but the textural differences. I'm all about texture at this scale um, of the white elements here it has a little bit of graininess to it. Um, and again, once light, you can see as light bounces off of it in different ways, it has a really, really nice, nice look to it. Uh, then I also uh, whipped up Photoshop and um, printed out some decals, made my own little bumper stickers. Again, when making dioramas, really helpful to try to emphasize scale. And so with a quarter scale Spider-Man here, I wanna make sure when you look at this, you understand this is supposed to be quarter scale as well. And this array of stickers at the bottom help with that. Now, uh, the final thing, and the one thing that I'm uh, really happy with that I put into the design is the ability to use the Hot Toys flight stand. And this screw mount uh, screws onto the bottom of a standard you know, Hot Toys display, whether it's a um, quarter scale diorama or even the sixth scale ones. Uh, they actually have, I believe, the same threading here. It's uh, it's metric, it's a one millimeter pitch, uh, and you can find a um, 
a tap that will allow you to tap that screw onto wood. And so my diorama here is on some plywood and I've built in three screw mounts where I can actually screw in the flight stand, the dynamic stand here, and actually use it with the character itself and position it maybe if I want him over on the left side then I can screw this on the left side or on the right side or even the opportunity to mix and match and put multiple things mounted here. And again all in the interest of having some shelf presence. That's that's what all these displays are about. And one of the reasons I love, you know, six scale and quarter scale Hot Toys figures is because they're not just static statues. They're they really ask to be to be posed. And when I have a backdrop and a diorama that I can pose it on, I can tell, you know, the kind of story. What is it? Is he just kind of resting against it? Is he trying to jump over it? Is he engaging with some other character alongside it? And then that just encourages me to uh, repose the character and, and mix it up and make the most of having this collectible. Uh, one final thing, uh, the suit, it is stretchy and because it is kind of that different mixed material, one thing I wanted to check to see is uh, what the kind of endurance of this material is. Uh, a lot of times some of the concerns of collectors it, for materials is, you know, when you have a more dynamic pose, sometimes you're, you know, stretching the material like over a knee or kind of bending it if I'm doing a twist, right? What are the kind of harder plastics rubbing against the, the softer ones, what happens over time. And so I did leave this figure over a couple of days in a more, a very kind of extreme dynamic pose. And then uh, the past two days, reset it to a more of a, a, a statue pose. And, you know, it does kind of reconstitute itself pretty well. You know, the knee here, you can see a little bit of stretching and the, the marks of it having been in a more stretch out pose uh, do fade away over time. Uh, but you do have to take care of these and make sure you're not pinching some of the fabrics you know, using the clips in an uh, appropriate way um, and keeping it, of course, trying to keep it dust free as well. But I'm really pleased with this diorama build uh, and this new process that I got to experiment with, with etching on this two color acrylic. And um, this actually does, I think, pair well with the existing stand so I can kind of mix and match the, the elements. Uh, tell the story of Peter Parker circa Spider-Man homecoming. Uh, I'll have links to where you can find these materials and these figures in the description below. If you're new to collecting, you know, a quarter scale figure is uh, really can maybe be a little bit intimidating to get into, but uh, I got to tell you, this sixth scale one from Far From Home, uh, I love the black costume and you know, wonderful accessories that come with this one as well. Uh, if you're on the fence, uh, absolutely consider picking up the six scale Spider-Man Far From Home upgraded suit. And if you want something with an incredible amount of shelf presence, uh, you can't go wrong with quarter scale. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, as I continue with my figure reviews and diorama builds. We'll have more projects in the future on Tested and I will see you next time. Bye.